Hello and welcome to the School of Six Meters. I am Dr. P. Whistle, instructor here at the school. I encourage any use of the 50 MHz spectrum, however I only support the proper operating procedures. Anytime I am on air, I tend to keep these four words in mind, principles, pride, professionalism and practice. Let's explore each one of those words. Principles, maintaining a clean operating standard following the rules and guidelines set forth by Elmers with years of experience. Never to deviate from those rules and standards. Pride, pride in who you are as an operator, being the best and maintaining the principles which have been set forth, helping others, pride in your service. Professionalism, keeping the fundamental values and core the basis of what has made amateur radio what it is. Your, on air, decorum. The nature of how you operate courtesy and stature while operating. Practice, doing what's right, maintaining the operating standards day in and out with changing conditions. I don't intend to be harsh or overbearing in these statements, but I see improper or poor operating all the time. I can tell you it disappoints me to hear and see the thin GS that I do on the band, or any band for that Matt Terrace without the ideas of principle, professionalism, pride and practice. Where will amateur radio be? It is my intent here at the School of Six Meters to explain or familiarize you with places that we as operators need to improve. First and foremost, rag chewing on the calling frequency. Big no no. In the off season I have a higher tolerance for this kind of operating. The band is normally closed, with meteor scatter and ground wave being the only real form of functional QSO. I can tolerate a little more rag chewing on the calling frequency. I think I understand why these operators do this in season, trying to generate some sort of activity, however sometimes it hinders other operators, operators with stations more capable of testing the waters. I have personally listened to some local operators rag chewing on the call frequency, while a 5 and 5Q5DX station is calling on that frequency. Maybe if they would not have been rag chewing they might have caught the DX. Students, it's the calling frequency 50.125, it's self-explanatory. Make your calls and move along. There have been times that I personally have made a few calls in the window, made an exchange, waited 3 or 4 minutes made another call, again made a brief exchange, only to find that conditions have improved to an e-opening. Good rule of thumb. If you work two stations outside of a 600 mile range of your calling area, it's time to set up shop on another frequency. Shove off of 50.125 at this time, or just listen via 50.125 for callers and on occasion, make a few calls yourself. Do not use 50.125 as your frequency in an opening. You will not make any friends that way. You are jamming the call frequency. This is totally unacceptable. You are intentionally blocking the call frequency. This sort of activity does not allow for any expansion of the opening. Working a pile and using the call frequency as your frequency is obviously not proper operating practice. ETI here operators do it every season. TEDX cluster. This is one that baffles me. The intended use of the DX cluster is to provide information to operators on bad conditions. Short and sweet. It is not intended to use as a messaging device. It is not intended to let folks know what frequency you will be operating, nor what direction you will be calling. If no one is answering your call, it's not because no one can find you, it's because you're not being heard. If you're not being heard it's time to look at your system and not to posting spots. The DX cluster is a tool that is being abused. How many times do we need to post that an XE3 is on 50.115? All of this goes hand in hand with DX spots. I understand that everyone is happy that they worked some DX, great. I'm with ya. The part that kills me is that every three call that works SECOW Alpha 8XXX posts his QSO come on guys, I'm happy that you worked him, but do we need the cluster filled up with 20 posts of W3s that worked SECOW Alpha 8XXX? No. If you have a disagreement, please don't use the cluster. This is a hobby, we are grown, professionals, do not use the cluster to flame or argue in. Come on, we are not high school kids anymore. Professionalism. 
contesting I am not a contester, nor do I ever aspire to be one, however I do not discourage or frown on it. What does disappoint me are the stations that run so close to the calling frequency like you are Emmett. You know you're doing it, and I see your tactic, but it's no good. We are amateur radio operators. Best engineering and operating practice, remember that? You're disrupting the rest of the operators that want to use the calling frequency for calls. Please set up shop somewhere that you do not disturb the calling frequency. Six meters is very special and the fact that we have guidelines and designated areas to call, please don't ruin it by abusing it. Or QRM it. CW versus SSB, I hear countless times, two stations working via CW on 50.125 and someone breaks in on top of them in SSB voice. You're not helping matters. Normally on 6 meters the CW copy is good, but there are those occasions that it's weak and QSB or via meteor scatter. Please refrain from calling on top of these stations. Without a doubt it's a long distance contact and you are probably interfering with one of the two stations copy. Not good. I think that some of the no coders think that the band is open or they too can make a contact. Please understand that just because you hear CW does not mean that the band is open to SSB voice. When the CW QSO ends, make your call. The DX window 50.110 good rule of thumb. If you have a hunch that the band may be open, by all means make your call, CQ, 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 DX do this in moderation and use some restraint. If you know the band is open to DX, listen only. Do not attempt to make a non-DX call in the window. If you want to call DX around the window that's great, but stay out of the window if the band is open. Pretty easy rule to follow, yet I hear seasoned veterans call and call and call in the window or make QSO after QSO in the window. Shame shame. You are the elders, new operators look up to you, do the right thing. DX in the DX window I have seen it, as most have, two or three DX stations running 50.110, as, their frequency. I know that normally these stations cannot hear each other. I'm sure that they both think all callers are for them. It gets ugly. First and foremost, Try to spread out. If you work two or three DX stations, please QSY and let someone know to spot you so we know where you are. We will find you. It makes it tough on everyone when two or three stations are working on 50.110. RST reporting, please, please give true accurate reports. The 599 is worthless unless the station is truly a 5 ninths. This is another tool that we have taken for granted. It neither helps me or you to give a false report. I want to know my signal. I base all my operations on this report. If I am a 4 by 5 and I gave you a 5 over 1 report, you are not going to hurt my feelings by giving me a true report. I want and need to know how you are hearing me. I can judge band conditions and my station parameters all by what you tell me. A band is critical on signal as 6 meters it is imperative that we give proper RST. The, can you hear me now, effect. Some operators use other sorts of media to communicate while working the band. Examples. Chat groups, instant messaging, DX cluster, internet based messaging forums. I find this a very very useful tool for a band that has conditions that are so unpredictable. However some take this to the very edge or border of the gray area. The gray area is a point where a contact or QSO can become invalid. Meaning, if a W3 and a K4 are communicating via these other forms and coaching or reporting are occurring in that method and not via transmitted exchanges on air, that becomes a foul in my eyes and the QSO is not valid. With the onset of Solar Cycle 24, we need to stress these practices with those operators that have forgotten or do not operate 6 meters. As the propagation gets better, we will find ourselves consumed with operators that have never worked the band before, therefore it is our job as ambassadors to communicate these very general and basic rules to those that do not know, don't remember, or just don't care. If we are to keep 6 meters the special band that it is. I LL this being said, these are my opinions. 
Some of these ideas have been instilled to me by my fellow amateur operators. What makes amateur radio great is the acts of professionalism, pride, principles and practices that have carried this service for many many years. This is what separates our service from some of the other services available. Without rules and standards it would be uncontrolled chaos. I feel if we lighten up on these very basic principles and we bend the rules from the practices that we now have in place, the integrity of the service will be compromised. Please do the right thing, and encourage others to follow. Teach those that do not know, or understand. Promote and practice good operating standards. I have enjoyed our chat, thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you again here at the School of Six Meters. 73.